This is the new Audio Control LC-1.1500. Audio Control has long been known for their technologically advanced car audio integration equipment, and their new multi-channel amplifiers are quickly becoming known for their sound quality. But how will this new high-powered mono amplifier stack up? It's rated at 850 watts RMS at 4 ohms and 1500 watts RMS at 2 ohms. Does it hit those specs? Can this amplifier be used to drive the biggest and baddest of subwoofers? What advanced integration features does this amplifier have built in and how can we tune each of those settings? Show sponsor Audio Control sent me one of these to put into the Jeep Wrangler project. Let's do an unboxing and install, some tuning, and of course, some test listening. Let's start things off with with seeing what is inside the box. First off, we have the amplifier, which is well packed, and then we have the instruction manual, followed up by an Allen key, which allows us to remove the top plate from the amplifier, and a guitar pick for adjusting settings. With the cover plate in position, this amplifier is visually pleasing, and it hides all of the different adjustment dials and switches. I'm going to show you exactly what each of those adjustment knobs are for and how to tune them later in the video, so stay tuned. But you can also see on the front panel of the amplifier, we have four 40 amp fuse uses power ground and remote turn on connections speaker connections we have a remote level control and here's where things get interesting not only is there a low level rca input there's also a speaker level input that's because this amplifier has audio controls line output technology built into it more on this in a little bit finally let's take a quick look at the dimensions this amplifier is 12 inches wide a little under 8 inches deep and about 2.1 inches tall I would consider this to be quite compact for an amplifier of this power rating. This is the exact same size as Audio Control's six channel amplifier, and it's the same depth as the four channel amplifier. This makes for a nice clean install with two or more amplifiers next to each other. Installing this amplifier is easy. I start with first mounting the four different mounting hole locations into a board that is securely mounted in the vehicle. Next up, I connect wires for the 12 volt constant. This goes to the vehicle's battery, and I also connect the ground. Both of these wires should be two gauge or larger. In this case, I'm using zero gauge. Now for my install, I also connected this remote in connection. That comes from the aftermarket head unit and tells this amplifier to turn on. I have to do this because I'm using the RCA line level inputs that come out of my aftermarket radio. But you don't necessarily need that wire. That's because this has audio controls line output technology built in. And that is right here. Let's say that in your vehicle you don't have an aftermarket head unit, but you still need a way to get signal into this amplifier. What you can actually do is you can remove that plug right there. It'll look a little something like this. You can connect multiple speaker wires and you just tap into the speaker wires on your vehicle. By tapping into the factory system where the base signal exists, we can send that signal into the amplifier, it's going to convert it, and we get a couple of extra features. The first feature is Audio Control's GTO, which stands for Great Turn On. And what that does is since we don't have an aftermarket head unit, we're not going to have this turn on wire. So what the amplifier is smart enough to do is it will monitor the speaker level input. When it senses a signal and this switch is activated, it will actually tell the amplifier to turn on with without having this connection. The other nice thing is this connection then becomes a remote out. It becomes energized with 12 volts and you could connect that to another amplifier to tell it to turn on. Another feature that's built into this amplifier that makes it great for OEM integration is the AccuBase technology. Many times the factory audio system, what the OEM manufacturers will do is as you turn up the volume on the stock head unit, it will actually roll off the bass performance. They do this to protect their inexpensive stock speakers. But when you're adding a subwoofer and you're adding new aftermarket amplifiers, you obviously don't want that anymore. As you turn up the volume, you want the bass to come up along with it. That's what the AccuBase technology does. It restores that roll off in bass. We can set the threshold, which is the level at which it starts to add in the bass, and we can set the level of bass that is added. So that covers all of these connections here. The next connection we have is right here for the ACR1 remote level control. 
As you can imagine, the ACR1 is a device that we can install in the front of the vehicle where we can reach this knob, and this allows us to control the level of output from this amplifier remotely. Now do keep in mind you don't necessarily need this, you can also have it just go up as you turn up the normal volume on your radio. Finally, we have the speaker wire connections here for the subwoofer. It's worth noting that this is a mono connection, which means the negative connections and the positive connections are just wired together inside. This allows for simplified connections to multiple subwoofers or to a subwoofer that has multiple voice coils. So I've got the installation process complete. Let's power this thing up, make sure everything's working, and then we can do the tuning process. All right, so we've got power, everything powered up correctly, and we've got, as you can hear, some bass. Now in this particular system, I've currently disconnected the mids and highs amplifier from the speakers because I'm gonna be turning things up and doing some tuning on this. So I also want to disconnect the subwoofer speaker wire here so we can set the gain and the crossover. So I'm gonna start with my gain at the minimized position. And for the crossover, setting this is simple enough. We have adjustment from 30 hertz all the way up to 230 hertz, and this is a low pass crossover. In other words, whatever the setting is, it's gonna allow the values below it to pass. It's a 24 dB per octave Linkwitz Riley crossover. Now as a quick side note, if you're using a DSP or a DSP integrated amplifier to control the signal that goes into this amplifier, you could bypass this crossover by just putting it at its maximized value. You would then set the crossover in your DSP software to a value that is lower. In my case, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna turn this all the way up. Now I need to adjust the gain. And for those of you that aren't familiar with what the gain is or many of the other settings that are common on amplifiers, check out this video up in the corner of the screen. Most important thing to know is gain is not a volume knob. Instead, what it is, is it's allowing us to level match between the amplifier and our source device. The setup process goes like this. I have my source unit right now playing a 40 hertz test tone. 40 hertz because that is a bass wave frequency. I'm going to turn up the volume on my source unit until I see this light illuminate on the amplifier. That light tells me that the source is maximized so I will then back it off one notch. Next I will use the adjustment tool to turn up the gain until I see the gain maximized light illuminate. I will then back it off slightly. Finally right here they have an output polarity switch that we can change from 0 to 180 degrees to allow us to quickly switch the polarity and test what sounds best with the subwoofer. Now I'll want to make sure that back up at the source unit I turn the volume completely down and then I can reconnect my speaker connections. So the amplifier is completely installed, completely tuned, but does this amplifier do its rated power? The answer, absolutely. My buddy Derek at Williston Audio Labs recently made a video where he put this amplifier on the amp dyno. So this amp is rated 850 watts at four ohms and 1500 watts at two ohms, and it actually outperformed those values. 1034 watts at four ohms and 1631 watts at two ohms. What's even more impressive to me though is those efficiency numbers nearly 80% at both 4 ohms and 2 ohms. This means significantly less current draw and strain on your electrical system than an amplifier that might not have as good of efficiency. To see his full test video of this amplifier, check out the link down in the video description. Now my friends, let's crank up the volume here and do some test bumping. The thing I've been enjoying most about this amplifier is not only is it pretty impressive and loud, it's also musically accurate. You can really feel that attack and hit of drum riffs and that sort of thing in music. This amplifier has the ability to control the subwoofer movement really well. To get your hands on this amplifier and to learn more, check out the link down in the video description to Audio Control where you can also find a dealer near you. Again, a special thanks to Audio Control for sponsoring this video. If you want to check out some of my other Audio Control related videos, you can do so here on screen. As always guys, don't forget to design, build, and install. I'll catch you guys in the next video.